for whatever reason, I believe that most people, when they hear the word parasite, they think of a worm, you know, a small worm. I think most people expect parasites to be small. They don't expect them to be large. And that's why when you refer to dogs as parasites, most people look at you like you're crazy. They look at it as some type of far-fetched theory with, you know, a bunch of similarities, nothing more. But by definition, a parasite is an organism that lives on or in a host organism and gets its food from or at the expense of its host. So by definition, dogs are parasites. We all should accept that. They can't survive without people. That's a parasite. Even when they're strays, they need people to survive, even when they are strays. They refuse to leave human territory when they are strays. That's a parasite. They want to consume our resources. That's a parasite. So there's nothing wrong with referring to dogs as parasites because that's what they are. There's nothing different between dogs and real parasites or what we call parasites. Look at the parasite that chops off the fish tongue, attaches itself to the nub. Now it feeds on whatever the fish feeds on that's a parasite with a whole face and arms it literally cuts the fish's tongue off that's a sophisticated parasite thing got eyes y'all have seen it right just search fish tongue parasite I've shown this before it's the creepiest thing you ever want to see in your life. This thing looks like a small alien inside the mouth of fish. Sometimes there's two of them. Yeah, they'll double team on one fish. Look at that thing. It's got several arms or legs. It's got eyes. That's a parasite. It's not a worm. I mean, nature is all about variation, isn't it? When you think of parasites, don't you see a large variation of parasites that are like worlds apart? Of course. Compare these parasites to the ones that are in your intestines, hookworms. This look like maggots. Well, if they can be that different, dogs can be parasites. Stay mindful of variation as we go through this video. Now I have a few videos to show you. And <laughs> Turns out there's lots of different birds that don't build a nest at all. They only lay their eggs in other birds' nests. So this behavior is called brood parasitism. And the trick is, you have to make an egg that looks like all the other eggs. Otherwise, the mother bird will kick that egg out of her nest and just raise her young. By instinct. So, it's instinct to only use your resources for your own offspring. Why don't people do this? Why don't dog lovers do this? Why don't they function like this? No matter how you slice it, the resources you spend on your dog could have been spent on your children. And y'all spend a lot of money on those worthless parasites. So you are dividing your resources. But 
If the egg looks exactly like all the other eggs, then she doesn't have any other option than to raise them all as if they were her own. If you don't have a nest, then you can invest a lot of your effort into producing eggs. Cowbirds, for example, which are the one of the most common brood parasites in the U.S., they can lay an egg every single day like a chicken and just put it in a nest here, a nest there. They don't have anything to do with the raising of their offspring at all. They leave that entirely to the, the mother of the nest where they deposited the egg. The trick with brood parasitism is the chick of the brood parasite will grow much faster than that of the chicks of the actual nest. It gets really big and it's like adaptation is to like kick. Even before it can open its eyes, it's kicking and just kicks the other eggs out. By instinct, has nothing to do with intelligence. And I say that because I think a lot of people who don't believe that dogs are parasites, they think that for them to be parasites, that it's a display of intelligence on part of the dog. No. Has nothing to do with intelligence at all. So if it's instinct for a foreigner, which is basically all a parasite is, to get rid of competition, why wouldn't dogs function like that? on instinct so what's the most attacked demographic those 13 and under with those between ages 9 and 0 making up the largest percentage of attack victims okay you decide if that's just a coincidence and it is indeed a dog's instinct to attack them. Okay, you got the statistics to prove it. And you got the fact they offer classes to help train the dog's desire to attack children out of them. Even if the other chicks hatch and survive, it's way bigger and its mouth is way bigger. And so when mom comes to feed, she sees this giant target mouth of the brood parasite and all her chicks are buried underneath, but she doesn't know. How creepy is that? They have evolved to beg, just like a mutt. And they evolved to do more begging. They actually make louder sounds than the natural uh, chicks of the bird. They're more aggressive with their beggary. They're larger, obviously. All of this just to obtain resources and be a leech, to be a parasite. And all her chicks are buried underneath, but she doesn't know which one is which. In fact, sometimes the brood parasite chick is much, much bigger than the actual mama bird. <laughs> so she just thinks she has kind of a freak for a kid and, and just goes with it, I guess. Now, some of you might say, well, dogs are not like that. Do y'all know that there are some brute parasites that actually kill the chick? They don't just push them out of the nest. They attack them. Anything they come in contact with. It's like a kindergarten from hell, but the little one's actually playing good defense. But that's not always the case. And then the mother comes back and listen, I don't think that these birds are all that good at counting. Let's see, there's one. Well, that's good enough for me. I mean, look at this mother. She's watching the baby push out an egg right in front of her. I'm not doing anything, Mom. I'm just backing up. But all of this is fairly subtle compared to the honey guide. It's born with a straight-up weapon, and it's not afraid to use it either. It bites and shakes its nestmates to death. In fact, it'll try to bite pretty much... Now, we've seen that. We're familiar with that, right? In dog culture. Where... The parasite mauls the biological offspring of the owners, right? That is the most attacked demographic. You decide if that's coincidence. 
but I'm seeing a lot of similarities here. Nest mates to death. In fact, it'll try to bite pretty much anything around it. I mean, just an in a parasite with an instinct to attack and bite. Just like these parasitic dogs. An instinct to attack and bite and prefers to attack your young. Again, you might find dogs that nurse their young, that don't abandon their young. But like I said, variation. Not all parasites are the same. Why should we expect dogs to be the same? As an annoying sound. But why do they make that sound? Why do they make that sound? sound like a human baby a human newborn you think that's another coincidence sounds exactly like a newborn I mean really that's the noise made by these puppies newborn puppies is that another evolution you know, like the eyebrow movement of these things. Why wouldn't it be? You know, these scientists have said that the dogs have evolved the ability to move their eyebrows because of evolution to mimic human facial expressions. So why would that evolution be restricted to just their nasty eyebrow ridges I consider a possibility that these uh, maggot parasites sound like human babies to trigger parental instincts in humans at least they have partially developed the ability to sound like human babies very creepy why do they make that sound just unnecessarily okay a brand new batch of rat parasites that's all I see. And I'm saying that because I know dog lovers are looking at this and saying, oh, I'm not saying all oh, at all. How creepy. Look at that. No other animal can do that. None. Why wouldn't these things be parasites when there are foreigners relying on our resources? Can't survive without our resources. And they have evolved many human traits and behaviors. The way they act, all dumb and helpless like a child lost and confused and dog lovers fall in love don't they almost like they're under a spell you see these things are perpetual infant like parasites enables them to get far more affection 
and attention than the biological offspring of human beings, just like these brood parasite birds acquire more resources than the natural offspring of the bird by being more aggressive and being more effective at triggering the parental instincts of the mother bird. You know, we're talking about nature. Again, it has nothing to do with intelligence. There's no reason why we should not expect dogs to be parasites. You know, when that argument comes up or the theory of dogs being parasites, my question is, can you prove that they're not? Because I see too many similarities 